A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high-o silver, the Lone Ranger. Empire Trading Company had established posts throughout the western United States. Most of their business was done with Indian trappers in sections where the white settlers had not penetrated. But the masked rider of the plains knew that emigrants would not be long in coming and that it was necessary to preserve the goodwill of the Indians. Whenever he heard of a trader who was taking advantage of them and thus making the country dangerous for white men, he fought on the side of the Indians until the dishonest trader had been brought to justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young and adventure lay at the end of every trail. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for the Indian country. There's going to be trouble. Hi, old Silver. Away. <laughs> The Lone Ranger was riding in the district near the Sandy River Post on his way to join his faithful Indian companion, Tonto. Suddenly, he caught sight of a group of riders emerging from a woods not far ahead. Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, oh. Mo Leckert, the agent at the Sandy River Post. These men have got an Indian boy with them. Silver, old fellow, there's something wrong here, and we're going to find out what it is. Come on, boy. Come on, Silver. Come on there, boy. Hold on there. Oh, rain up! I said rain up! Oh, 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 what do you think you're doing, mister? Stage in a one-man hold-up? I want to know what you're doing. Where did you get this Indian boy? <laughs> Stranger, this ain't just any Indian kid. This is Lame Bear's young man. Blast your roof! When do you learn to keep your big mouth shut? Gosh, Bull, I... Keep your mouth shut! Lame Bear, son, huh? What do you think you're trying to do, put Lame Bear on the warpath? Suppose you mind your business and let me tend to my own. Indians on the warpath is the business of everyone. All right, stranger. As long as Roof here couldn't keep his tongue from wagging, you might as well know the rest of it. I'm going to teach that blasted heathen a lesson. And take it from me, he won't forget it. What's Lame Bear done to you? Well, what's he done to me? Why, the ordinary painted sidewinder just about ruined my trade. He won't let his redskins do business with me. And there ain't no other Indians that's got the nerve to come into his territory. The old snake has been out to get me. But I'm going to get him first. I'll tell you why he refuses to trade with you. You've cheated him at every turn. You've taken valuable pelts and bought it unfairly. Sure, look when here. When he gets held out for fair prices, you fed them cheap whiskey until they didn't know what they were doing. You've been up to every trick you know or can think of. You've lost your trade. You've had it coming. You're going to let him talk to you that way, boss? How about teaching this meddling hombre a lesson, too? I'll fix I'm it. taking charge here. You sneaking mask crook. First, you're releasing the boy. Like blazes, I am. Keep him, and the Indians will run wild. They'll sweep this entire country free of whites. 
and every death will be on your head. What whites are there in this country? We can finish anything we start, mister. How about the woman at your post right now? How do you know about her? I've heard that a man by the name of Atkins is visiting the post with his wife and son. And what about it? You can bring any kind of trouble you wish on yourself. Whatever you'd get, you deserve. But you can't be allowed to bring trouble to strangers. Sir, them dudes right for inviting themselves where they ain't wanted. Maybe some trouble would send them back where they come from. I won't argue with you. Set the boy free. I won't do Quick, that. Quick, sir. I'll... Wait, Bull. Listen. Drum. Four talk, Bull. The engines have found out about us grabbing the kid. The damage is done. We've got to get back to the post. We can't let them painted devils catch us out here. One moment. Sir, listen. You're listen. still covered. Don't move a step until I say the word. I'll blast the man that tries it out of the saddle. No, look I've here. got something to say. Then you can go. For the present, you can keep the boy. As I told you, I don't care what punishment you get. It couldn't be more than you've asked for. You'd better go careful, stranger. I'll be responsible for what I say. I'm not thinking of your safety. I'm thinking of the safety of those people from the east that are staying at your post. Those Indians want revenge. Taking Lame Bear's son was a crime. If you released him now, it would mean the Indians would have nothing to hold them back. Well... Hold him. Perhaps you can bargain with Lame Bear. The boy's freedom for your safety. But if you harm him in any way, you'll answer to me. If that's all you got to say, what are you keeping us for? One thing more. Yeah? If there's an emergency, the post is in danger, or if you can't bargain with Lame Bear, I may be able to help you. A smoke signal in the daytime or a fire at night will bring me. That's for Atkins and his family, however. Now get going. Come on, fellas. You, Roof, keep your eye on the kid. Get up. Get up. Get up. Silver, old fellow, we are going to see some trouble. All right, boy. Back to camp. Come on, Silver. When Bull Eckert and his men had returned to the post, they could hear war drums in the distance and were forced to realize the post was in danger. But before Jim Atkins, a visitor from the east, Bull pretended that there would be no trouble and... What are you afraid of, Atkins? We've been back an hour and there ain't been no sign of them redskins yet, has there? If you're a yeller, pack your duds and scoot for home. It takes men to live in this country. You fool. Now, I don't know why I waste the time arguing with you. You listen to me whether you want to or not. I've been here long enough to understand your methods, boy. What's that to me? Before you're through, you may find it more than you bargained for. Look here, mister. You've got some kind of pull with a home office back east or they wouldn't have fixed it for you to come here. But that don't make you my boss, savvy that? Fact is, you ain't even with the company. Yeah? And I'll tell you something more. I've been with the company for going on 15 years. I've handled the toughest post, the toughest men, and the rip roaringest engines you ever want to see. And anybody will tell you that for all them 15 years, there ain't a fellow with the company that's got better pelts for less cash than I have. Yeah, me, Bull Lecker. I've heard about that. You're a once-over man. You get what you can in a season or two and then clear out. And after the enemies you've made, the company's had to withdraw from every district you've worked. Yeah, they just wasn't fellas tough enough to handle the jobs I can. That's the excuse you've always given. The company believed it for a time. Say, it seems to me for an hombre that ain't with the company, you've got a sight of information. Never mind that. I've told you what I think and what I know. And of all the stupid things you've done, kidnapping Lame Bear's son was the worst. Uh, you're kind of asking for trouble, ain't you? You plan on making it? Mister, I ought to pick you up and break you in, too. I'm telling our boy. Jill! Jill! Sounds like that woman of yours yelled. Bess, what is it? Oh, boy, Dale. The Indians have taken him. Oh, Jim. My Lord. Do something. Get him back. Go after them all, please. Now, wait, honey, wait. How did it happen? When was it? Oh, when I think of it. Quick, honey. They sneaked up to the cabin. I didn't see them. I didn't hear them. And then... Yes? They just took him away. They never said a word. Never opened their mouths. Oh, Jim, it was horrible. How much of a start have they got? It, it was half an hour ago. They tied me up. I just got free. Half an hour ago? I ain't no use chasing after him now. Hegart, you're responsible. You started this trouble. I'll get you for this. You murdered you. Hey, let go of me. Oh, 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 I could beat the life oh. out of it. If I had a gun, anything. Flash, you quit shaking oh, me. No. Roof, oh, Roof, Roof, come here. Oh. Get this half pint oh. wild cat off me. Oh. Get him away. Oh. Roof, oh. Pete, oh. where in blazes are you? Drive this little call in, kid. Crazy galoot. Here, they cut it out. Get away from me. I'll fix him. Dale, kidnap my red skin. Give me a hand with it, Pete. I got him. You. Hold on to him, fellas. Off his head. What was that he said about the red The kidnapped Dale, and you're the men responsible. Is that a fact, boss? What if it is? 
There ain't nothing to be done about it now. You've got to get my boy back. You've got to. Ma'am, I don't know how. I'll go after him. I'll go by myself. Now, hold on. You ain't going to do no such thing. Me, personal, I don't give a hoot what becomes of you. But the company said I was to see you didn't come to no harm. And you ain't going to if I can help it. Now, just get it out of your head you're leaving this post. Because you ain't. We got to think of some other way to handle this. Boss, how about telling the Redskins they get the Chief's youngin' back if they send back Jim's kid? You willing to go bargain with them? Well, I... You set foot near Lane Bear's village and you'll be losing your top hair before you can turn your tracks. But there must be some way. There must be. Shucks, I guess. Wait, huh? That masked fella. Oh, what about him? Don't you recollect what he said, boss? Don't you recollect his saying that if we got into trouble we couldn't handle to get in touch with him? A masked man? Honey... Bull told me about him. Perhaps he can help us. No, I don't How'd know. How'd we find him? Build a signal smudge like he told us. I'll bet he'd be just local enough to come. And what in blazes could that hombre do that we couldn't? He said he'd be willing to do what he could, didn't he? He wouldn't be fool enough to risk his scalp for strangers. Well, what's in the harm in finding out? Well... If there's any way to get my boy back, you've got to try it. There's nothing else to be done. Good enough. If he's willing to risk his scalp, that suits me fine. And if he ain't, we're in no worse fix than we was before. Sure. Pete, you go in the back room where a lame bear's kid is and see if there's anything he needs. Grub or anything like that. We'd better go easy on the young'un. Uh-huh. And you, Ruth, yeah. go build that fire. Build as big a smoke as you know how. Then we'll see what happens. Now get. <laughs> The masked man was waiting for a signal from the trading post and answered it at once. From Bull and Jim Atkins, he learned what had happened. Then he raced back to his camp again. As he reined in his great horse, Silver, he saw Tonto approaching in the distance. Oh, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh. Tai, keep us, Oh, dear. Oh, 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 oh. Tonto, did you get to talk to Lane Bear? Oh. Uh-huh. Tonto, see him. And him plenty mad. When they were gone, I got a signal from the trading post. The Indians stole the son of those people from the east. Tonto know that. Kimosabe, how'd you find out? Me with Injun. One brave fetch boy there. What are the Indians' plan? Are they going to keep the boy? Lame bear, not let boy go. When him get White Bird back. And the men at the post absolutely refuse to give up White Bird until Atkins' son has returned. Neither side trusts the other. Mm, that plenty bad. Neither the whites nor the Indians will give up their prisoner first. Tonto, no lame bear not do that. But Kimosabe, I promised to do what I could. Unless this is settled peaceably, there'll still be more trouble. Isn't that right? I couldn't plan anything until you'd returned. But I've been thinking... What you think? Tonto, no one at the trading post has seen you. That's right. And so there is a way this trouble might be settled. What that way? If the whites and the Indians could both be persuaded to surrender their prisoners in exchange for a hostage, perhaps... What... what you mean? Suppose the whites were told Lame Bear himself would ride alone to the trading post, put himself into their hands while they released White Bird, and remain their captive until Dale is sent back. Lame Bear, not do that. Wait, Hunter. And suppose that Lame Bear was told that Dale's father would do the same, give himself up as hostage for his son until White Bird's return. Do you think Lame Bear would agree to that? Maybe him do that. In reality, however, neither Lame Bear nor Jim Atkins would act as hostages. What you mean? Kimosabe, would you be willing to risk your life to help settle this quarrel? Ah, oh, Tonto do that. Then I have a plan. I'll return to the trading post and put the proposition up to them. In the meantime, you'll ride to Lame Bear's village and make the same suggestion to him. Tonto Savvy. If they both agree, you'll go to the post and say you're Lame Bear. I happen to know that although his tribe traded with Bull Eckert in the past... None of the whites at the post have ever seen the chief himself. Uh-huh. White Bird can't speak English, so he won't be able to give your identity away. Uh-huh. I'll take off my mask and put on a disguise, and then ride to Lame Bear's village, pretending to be Jim Atkins. And somehow I'll manage to warn Dale not to reveal who you are when he's sent back to the post. That heap smart. Neither side will know it's been tricked until both prisoners are home again. And then it won't matter. Mm, that's right. But Tonto, there's one other thing. What? What that? Bull thinks Jim Atkins is just a visitor from the east, curious to see the west. Oh. I have a different idea, however. And if this trouble is taken care of, I think there's going to be a basis established for real peace between the whites and the Indians in this territory. And that would be plenty good. Now, Tonto, you understand everything? Tonto savvy. Then let's ride. I'll go to the trading post while you persuade Lame Bear to accept the hostage. Steady, Silver. Tonto. Tonto, do that. Then return to camp as quickly as you can. I'll meet you here. Uh Huh? Hurry up! Get him up! Get out! (laughs) 
The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger and Tonto left their camp in different directions as the first step in their daring plan. At the trading post, Jim Atkins and his wife waited for word from the masked man. But Bull Eckert had no confidence in him and... Look here, Atkins. You're a stranger in these parts. Like I tried to tell you before, I savvy things you don't. And I say that masked fellow's a crook. He ain't helping you out for nothing. We'll see. And once more, I contend he ain't even got no ideas on how to straighten things out anyway. He said he'd be back. Uh, He'll be back. Like blazes. Fess, Fess, look. The masked man. Yes, Jim, he did come back. What? Captain. The masked man. You still insist you won't release Whitebird until your son has returned? Mr. I... Atkins ain't got nothing to say about that. Lame Bear's young and is my prisoner. And he don't get loose till we see Dale back here safe and sound. I happen to know the Indians feel the same way about releasing Dale. They won't do that until White Bird has been returned to them. And if we was loco enough to let our prisoner go back first, them injured the double crosses are sure shooting. I doubt that. Stranger, I want you to know that I'd be willing to take your word for Lame Bear's good faith. Rock. But what Bull says is correct. Our only hold on Lame Bear is the fact that his son is in our hands. And as much as I'd like to bargain for an even trade... Mask man, I'm afraid to chance it. I understand, Atkins. But isn't isn't there some other plan? There is. If you people will do your part. What, mister? Tell us what. Suppose Lame Bear puts himself into your hands and you release his boy. Then Lame Bear, the chief of the tribe, would be your hostage until Dale was safely returned. No, Lame Bear wouldn't do that in a million years. But if he did... It would be a way out. And you'd send White Bird back to his people? We would. But I don't see how... Well, oh, you can't have any possible objection to that. With Lame Bear in your hands, he wouldn't dare keep Dale. It would mean his life, and he'd know it. Look here, Masked Man. How do we know you can get Lame Bear to come here? You don't. What's more, I'm making no promises. I'm only asking for your word that if he does, you'll play fair and release White Bird. Yes, we'll give you that. I'll answer for all of us. Then I'll leave you. There's much to be done. And if my son comes back to me, I'll bless you as long as I live. We'll see you again, friend. You will. But the faster I act now, the better. All right, old fellow. Hip. <laughs> to see what luck Tonto had with Lane Bear. Come on, Silver. Come on, old boy. In Lane Bear's village, Dale Atkins, confined to a teepee, was guarded by a group of warriors under the command of the chief himself. Sorrow at the loss of his own son was written deeply on Lane Bear's face. But at the sound of approaching hoofs, his features became expressionless. His figure straightened, and he issued a brief order to the braves about him. Nautoka! Romanicte! Oh, oh, Silver! Oh, oh, fella! Oh, boy! White man, keep word. White man, come. <laughs> Your chief lame bear? Ah, uh, me lame bear. I'm the man you'll hold prisoner while the white boy is given his freedom. Ah. Uh, I trust you, lame bear. I've come to you unarmed. I remain here until White Bird returns to you. White Bird not come, you die. I understand. Lee Patu! But wait, Lame Bear. Huh? Before the boy is released, I want to speak to him. You have my word, I'll not trick you. Why you won't see him? To give him a message for the whites, to make certain White Bird is freed. Where is the boy? Him here in TP. You go, make talk with White Boy. Lame Bear, wait here, outside. But not wait long. Very well, Lame Bear. I'll hurry. After the Lone Ranger talked with the boy, Dale was led from the teepee, given a pony, and was allowed to go free. Knowing that the Lone Ranger's life depended upon the return of White Bird before sundown, Dale drove the Indian pony to the limit of its strength. At last, he reined in before the trading post. Oh, oh boy, hold oh there. Oh, Dale, my boy, you're safe. Mother and Dad. Son, thank heaven you're back. Bull, where is he? 
Lame Bear's son has got to be sent back to his tribe right away. Bull's inside with Chief Lame Bear. He... And come on, hurry. Jail. Mother, this is important. Come along, Dad. Well, dear, you got back, huh? Yes. And, boy, you've got to let White Bird and Lame Bear go back to their tribe now. What's the hurry, son? A man's life depends on it. Dale, Bull will let them go. You come back. Just a minute. Dale, you just come from that Indian village. Is this here Indian Chief Lame Bear or ain't it? Uh, me, Lame Bear. Shut up, Redskin. I'm asking the boy. Well, Dale, is he or ain't he? Why, why sure he is. <laughs> All right, Paul, my boy's back. Now, there's no reason to hold the chief or his son any longer. No. <laughs> we promised that masked man that White Bird would be given his freedom as soon as Lame Bear gave himself over to us. Bull, you insisted then on waiting until Dale got here. And now you're... Wait. My dad, what's wrong? Dale, you weren't to be released until White Bird got back to his village. But how did you get away? Why, when they let me go when that white man got there. What white man? Well, I don't know his name, but he turned himself over to the Indians in my place until White Bird gets back to them. And then he... Was he masked, son? Why, then no. what did he look like? Think, Dale. Well, he was tall, held himself straight, had wide shoulders, looked like he knew how to handle himself. Then it was him. Jim, you the mean... The same man without his mask. It must have been. But I don't understand this. Well, Atkins, I do, Savvy, you see. Your masked friend has put himself in a tough spot. What do you mean, Bull? Dad, we've got to get fresh horses and get these Indians started. Ah, uh, me go now. Take White Bird. Not so fast. Them two ain't going no place. But that man's life is at stake. If White Bird isn't back in the village by sundown, the Indians will kill him. <gasps> Me go. Keep back, all of you. Wait, put down the gun. Put that gun away. Didn't you hear what Dale just told us? Ruth, Pete, come here. Will you low down? Shut up and listen to me. I'm the head of this trading post, the boss here. And now I got things fixed just the way I want them. What do you mean? Listen, we want furs and them redskins got them. But already Lame Bear here climbed up on his high horse. Said his engines weren't going to trade here no more. But I say they are. Because until we get them furs, Lame Bear and his kid, White Bird, stay right here. You rotten schemer, Bull. You've made just one mistake. Yeah? Your plan is based on this man being Lame Bear. Well, he isn't. He's named Tondo, the friend of the man who rescued me. What? Oh, and you think I believe that? Believe it or not, it's true. I promised I wouldn't tell, but now I've got to. And that's plenty true. Me take White Bird and go. No, you don't. Roof, beat, keep the bunch up and cover we're all staying right here. From the teepee where he was closely guarded, the Lone Ranger watched the sun drop toward the horizon. As the minutes passed, he began to wonder if White Bird would come before nightfall. Lame Bear waited no less grimly than his prisoner, but at length he spoke to a warrior at his side. Then turned and entered the teepee. Pale face, sun go down quick. White bird will come, lame bear. He'll be here. Him not here now. You hear? Brave, ready for you. My people call. Garnuk Kope. At lame bear's shout, two stalwart braves entered the teepee. Each gripped an arm of the lone ranger. Then Lame Bear brushed aside the flap of the tent and led the way, the others forcing the white man to follow him. The Lone Ranger saw that resistance would be futile. He looked toward the west where the sun was slowly sinking beneath the rim of the horizon. Something must have gone wrong. Still a minute or two, not long enough. If my bird were coming, he'd be here by this time. This must be the end unless... You speak? Nothing you'd understand, Lame Bear. Palut Nocti! The Lone Ranger was led to the stake. Rawhide lashes bound his hands and lashings were drawn about his body. The chanting of the Indians grew softer. The wood was piled higher and higher around him. In the end, it had to come sometime. I hoped it might be postponed. So much still to be done. You... The sun hasn't disappeared yet, Lame Bear. Soon, sun all gone. You afraid... Afraid of what? You afraid of pain? There will be no pain, Lame Bear. You lie... White bird not come back. There still is time. No. Now sun gone. Manikte carpe. Not pay. The sun was gone. Lame Bear raised his arm and signaled to the Indians who were waiting. With flaming torches, they approached the deadwood pile around the stake. The torture fire was lighted. 
flames took hold quickly, leaping up to consume the small sticks. A cloud of smoke billowed up the logs, and the Lone Ranger felt that all hope was gone. Then a distant shout. Horses loomed from the edge of the distant wood. A paint horse carrying Tonto, another rider in white cloud, was close behind. All eyes turned, and Chief Lane Bear saw the Lone Ranger's friend dashing toward the council ring. Latu! The chief roared commands to his men. They leaped into the flames, kicked aside the burning wood while Lane Bear himself sliced through the ropes and thongs that bound the Lone Ranger. Tonto, Lane Bear's son and Jim, thundered close and brought their horses to a rearing halt. Tonto, you come. Chief Lane Bear, your son, he's with Tonto. Latu! Ha-ta! Ha! Tonto, what happened? Huh? Bull, Bull, try hold us. We have fight. Make him prisoner. Bull wouldn't let you and Whitebird go. Friend, he wouldn't have. If it hadn't been for Tonto here, you should have seen this Indian part of yours going to action. There's no doubting he's your friend. He must have I told Lame Bear you'd come, but Lame Bear. Me make talk with Whitebird. Him say these men good men. Other pale-faced bad men. There are good and bad among both Indians and white men, Lame Bear. We want to be your friends. You brave. You not afraid die. You heap friend, Lame Bear. Chief Lame Bear, I'm from the east. I represent the Empire Trading Company. I was sent here to check on Bull Eckhart. And now I want to say that Eckhart will be replaced by an honest, competent man as soon as I return. But Chief, more than that... My company wants to keep your trade. Atkins, I suspected that was your errand. This country is too wild to visit merely out of curiosity. I've told you this only because I believe it necessary, under the circumstances. You send good men to trading posts? Lame Bear, sell them fur. Good. Chief Lame Bear, I think this is the beginning of real peace in this country. And the credit goes to the masked man. I you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 